Hi, everybody, and welcome to this month's live stream event. I am Pamela D. Wilson. I'm a caregiving expert, advocate, and a speaker. Today, we're talking about aging and decision making. And this broadcast is going to translate into an episode for my podcast, The Caring Generation. It'll be available next week. So please share this video broadcast with other people you know who might be caring for themselves, aging parents, or grandparents. If you want to know more about me and how I support aging adults and caregivers and caregiving resources, you can visit my website. It's PamelaDWilson.com. Decision making at any age can be very complicated when you're looking at very serious and life affecting choices like where to live, what city, what state do you rent an apartment, do you buy a home, who do you marry, who do you date, do you want to have children and how that might change your life, what do you do for a job or career, decisions about your education like going to college, how to save and plan for retirement, and then what on earth do you do when you're doing all of these things and all of a sudden your aging parents, your brother, your sister, your spouse, they get sick and they need your care and they need your time. Then you have a whole host of other decisions that you have to make. And these decisions have a huge, 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 huge impact on your life. So if they happen when we are a younger caregiver, the impacts can be different. You may end up delaying college, delaying getting married, delaying having children. When you're older, the effects are different too. You may decide to quit your job and care for parents. So we have this time frame between being a young caregiver, being an old caregiver, caring for our parents, and actually becoming the person that needs care. So in the time we have together, I'm going to talk about a few things. How health affects decision making. The difference between decision making when we're young versus older and how confidence or a lack of affects aging and decision making. And if you're struggling, how do you get your parents or your grandparents to make decisions? And sometimes as a caregiver, how do you affect this? That answer may really surprise you. So let's talk first about health and aging and decision making. The average person by the time they reach 60 or 70 can have a lot of physical health issues. You have heard a lot about chronic diseases in all this news about COVID. So chronic diseases are things like heart disease, COPD, breathing problems, diabetes, arthritis, that make it more challenging to maintain a healthy immune system. And we now know that good health plus a healthy immune system is, is really important to avoiding and recovering from things like COVID and the flu and other illnesses that are easily transmissible. Heart disease results in a lot of circulatory issues. Believe it or not, it translates to dementia and to memory loss. So dementia is a term that describes memory loss kind of unrelated to a diagnosis of Alzheimer's that is more hereditary. Older adults who have any type of memory loss, dementia, Alzheimer's, brain injury, they have more difficulty evaluating information and making decisions. And you might see this in your parents. So here's a tip. Research confirms that adults who exercise 45 to 60 minutes a day, every day, increase blood flow through their bodies, through their brain, through up here. You can maintain better brain and cognitive health in your later years. So if you're not yet physically active, daily exercise is something to consider if you want to be physically and mentally healthy when you're 60 and beyond. As I mentioned, any type of cognitive problem, memory loss, it, it affects your parents' decision to make good decisions. And you might be seeing this and not realize that they have dementia. Your parents may be refusing care, not taking medications, forgetting to take medications, not going to the doctor, forgetting that they have doctor appointments, not paying their bills, their house is dirty, they're not eating well. 
All of these are indicators of memory loss. And so it's better to go seek a diagnosis so that you know, so that you can plan. And this kind of leads into how we make decisions when we're young versus old. And, and age is really relative. I know some 70 year olds who act like they're 30 and I know some 40 year olds who seem like they're 80. So a lot of it really is up here and in the way that we pursue our daily activities. So in general, people who are young have growth mindsets. They might be future oriented, planning goals, doing all this kind of stuff. So as a result, you seek a lot of information. You may watch a lot of videos like this. By the way, there's hundreds on my YouTube channel. You might investigate information on the internet. You might call people. You might enjoy social activities and networking and learning from other people. So if you think about aging and decision-making, it really is a process, right? You first have to think of what are you trying to decide about? Do you have a goal or an issue or is there a problem? And then you figure that out. And so then you start searching for information and do I have one option or five options or 10 options? Then you have to evaluate those options and say, well, is A better than B? Is B better than C? Which one am I going to do? Then you just decide on the next steps and you try it, right? And then as you're trying it, you're like, well, is this working out the way I thought? Not working out the way I thought? Do I need to adjust course? So that's the way many people approach decision making, and it's really a good process to have. Now, on the other hand, our parents, older adults, can kind of shortcut that process. They can find that having too much information makes it too difficult and having too many choices is too overwhelming. Where you and I might want, we want five or six choices. We want to be open to anything. Our parents may want two choices and not be flexible or not be open to doing a lot of things, which is why all of this decision making can be hard for elderly parents. A lot of older adults limit their decision making based on their past experiences. So, and we do it too. So how many of you have ever had just a bad experience and you're like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm not going to do that again. What was I thinking? Okay. Or how many of you have heard your parents say, well, I'm not going to a nursing home. I'm no assisted living for me. But they're basing that on the fact that they were in a nursing home or in an assisted living community 10, 20, 30 years ago, well, things change with the times, right? If you go in one today, you might be pleasantly surprised. So the other thing for elderly parents, and this applies to all of us too, if we're not really sure what to do or sure what the options are, we can just put off making that decision because we don't, there's no time frame. We're not sure if we want to do it. I mean, there's a lot of reasons not to do something, right? So I'll share an example from my own life caring for my mother because I was a young caregiver. So my mom had heart disease. She smoked a pack of cigarettes a day. Heart disease began in her 30s and 40s. By the time she was 50, it was pretty bad. And she had to have quadruple bypass surgery at the age of 60 because all the arteries in her heart were, were plugged. Now, I want to add a little context to this. This bypass surgery was around 1985, so 40 years ago. It's a long time ago. There's been a lot of medical advances since then. But after the surgery, the doctor told my mom two things, lose weight and give up those cigarettes. So after she had surgery, she was pretty weak. If you've known anybody who's had bypass surgery, it really is hard on the body. And so I was kind of watching her and helping and she really wasn't doing any work on this weight loss thing, right? So what I did was I took the initiative. I called five, six, seven weight loss companies and I had them mail information to my mom's house because I thought, well, if I send the information, she'll have it. She won't have to make the phone calls herself. It might be easier. That actually turned out to be a good thing because she was able to look at them and we talked and she ended up picking one and she lost 20 pounds, which was awesome. So as an adult caregiver, know that 
If your parents have health issues, they may be too tired, too exhausted. They don't know how to search for information. This is where you can be a huge help. It's an example where you can take the initiative to do some research and then ask your parents if they want to sit down and talk about it and make a plan. So that's like the first suggestion to how do you help aging parents who need to make some decisions but don't seem to be making any progress. And really it applies to all of us. Do a little research and look at your options. Now I want to talk about decision making when we're older. The older we get, the more we've lived, the more experiences we've had, right? We've made mistakes. We've had maybe losses. Maybe some of the mistakes we made have made us a lot less confident about our ability to make good decisions or a lot less uncertain about how is this going to work? Is it not going to work? I don't know. Our parents feel the same. So when you look at your parents and they're delaying making these decisions, think about yourself. So the next time you have a decision maker, when you made one recently, did you just kind of jump in and move full steam ahead? Or did you think, oh, I did this before, made a mistake, didn't work out. What am I supposed to do? So research talks a lot about when the stakes are high, when, when this decision can really have a huge effect on our life. We should go through the decision-making process, take our time, look at the pros and cons, and understand that fear of making a bad decision can affect us making the decision or delaying the decision. A lack of confidence can affect that too. So this affects a lot of older adults because they have made a lot of mistakes. And so they're less motivated to go through a decision-making process because they're thinking, oh, it's not going to turn out good. You know, maybe I'll just wait. Well, that is why you notice that your parents are stalling. And they may not want to admit to you as children that they're stalling because they made a mistake or they lack confidence or they're afraid of what might happen if they make a mistake. So sometimes there are situations where parents just refuse. They're not going to do anything. They're not going to decide. And for you as the caregiver, super frustrating because you're watching all this happen. You're spending 10, 20, 30, 40 hours a week at your parents' house. And you're thinking, this is killing me. <laughs> this is why I hate being a caregiver. So in the 20 years that I have been helping caregivers and older adults and families, I had a lot of clients who refused a lot of things. So refused to take medications, to exercise, to go to the doctor, or even think about moving from a home to an independent living or an assisted living community. And if they would have thought about this or made these decisions, could have made a huge difference in their life. They could have lived independently, had all these choices, social activities, everything. But for one reason or another, they refused. So eventually what can happen, and you may see this with your parents or your grandparents, eventually something is going to happen, some fall, some sickness, some accident, which happened to many of my clients. And this happened and they went to the hospital and it was impossible for them to return back home. So some change, some turn of events forces the decision making. And the result of that, though, is fewer choices and less independence. So we have to think about rational thinking and irrational thinking and thinking based on fear and losses versus, wow, if I look at my options and I decide today, look at how many more choices, how many more options I'm going to have, how much better life could be. So those are kind of the conversations to have with your parents to say, wow, I want you to have as many options as possible. That's why we should look at this today or start thinking about it or start talking about it. So part of the challenge is if your parents don't have any motivation or reason to think that something unfortunate could happen, that's many times why they delay making these choices. 
they're living in their home and everything's been going okay. And they're thinking, well, why should I change it? Why should I make any choices? Why should I take my medications or go see the doctor? Nothing's going to happen. I've been okay so far. Or if you try to talk to them about this, they don't believe you because they're like, well, you're my kids. What do you know? Sometimes family members will actually bring me in to have those conversations because I'm impartial and, and I've seen it. I've seen it happen for 20 years. I can almost predict when somebody is going to need more help or something's going to happen. And I would rather help people prevent those things than to have a caregiver say, oh, you know what? We talked to you and you know what? Mom or dad had a fall. This happened. So when you think about this at your age, you also want to think about what you're doing to think about things that you might not think are going to happen to you. And the example to look at really is what's happening with your parents today. How did you become this caregiver? What happened? What's going on with them? So when you think about it, the idea to be proactive in caregiving or health or really anything, and I'll use an example. How is your parents not making a decision to be proactive to do something to prevent something that they don't know that's going to happen? How different is that from you not exercising or not eating healthy today so that you can be healthier 20, 30, 40, 50 years into the future? It really isn't any different. So sometimes we as caregivers actually have to model the behaviors that we want our parents to participate in. Because really, until we have seen the risks or heard of the risks or had a friend or somebody in a car accident or a friend's parents who, you know, have dementia and they got in the car and they ended up a thousand miles away. Until we see or hear those things, we don't even realize that they can happen. And that's just, that's part of life, okay? That's why we're not motivated to do anything. You know, how many of us wait and wait and wait? And, you know, it's, it's not until the car breaks down that we think, oh, you know, maybe I should have taken the car in for the oil change. Or, you know, you have a tooth problem that you think, well, maybe I should have got my teeth cleaned six months ago. It's not until all these bumps in the road happen that we really think about what could I have done to prevent this? A lot of times we're running from behind trying to catch up. It doesn't have to be that way. You know, I don't know... One person who hasn't had something happen where they said, oh, I should, you know, should have done something about that, should have thought about that earlier. I don't know a single person, myself included, who hasn't had to make a difficult decision like our parents are making at one point or another in life. But for our parents and for us as caregivers related to caregiving and health and aging and decision making, digging our heads in the sand isn't a good strategy. Being in denial or delaying decisions isn't a good strategy because then that can reduce, you know, those hundred choices we had, maybe now there are five. All those options we had, mm, not many. So whether you are 20 or 30 or 40 or 50, if you want to live independently when you're older, I encourage you to look at all of this, to think about this. Talk to your parents about it. The only way to make living independently happen when we're older is to take personal responsibility today. And that means thinking about, you know, where will you live? Where will your parents live? Saving money so you can pay for care. Medicare doesn't pay for everything. Major shocker, I know. How to manage your health, your legal aspects, and then investigating what you need to know and then making the best decisions and kind of progressing through life. So whether we like it or not, change is going to happen. Some of us think, yay, change. I love change, new opportunity, new things. But when it's change that we don't plan for or change that we don't want, like a parent breaking a hip or them needing us to show up to the house to, to care for them, then it's kind of like, mm, I don't like this so much. So all of this uncertainty can also stop parents from making decisions because they think, ah, oh, oh, the good old days wasn't, you know, 10 years ago, it was the good old days. I could do all these things. We did all these things. And, you know, now life's just not going to get any better. So kind of we get into this rut thinking, well, life has been this way. It's not going to change. It's not going to get better. So why should I do anything? How many of you out there have a goal that you want to achieve or you're looking at your life today and you're thinking, well, you know, this is okay, but 
it could be better. And then you plan and you make a goal and you get motivated, right? So the question is, how do we motivate our parents to think that tomorrow could be better or it could be worse or next month or, you know, next week? So being comfortable in our life is kind of the enemy of progress and making decisions and moving ahead. A lot of older people like predictable days, predictable schedules. They like order. You know this if you're caring for your parents. If they get a change in routine, sometimes it just throws everything up in the air and you're having to deal with a lot of extra stress that you really don't have time to deal with. So it's almost like COVID or some world event has to happen to make us really realize that tomorrow may not be the same. We could wake up to a whole different world tomorrow. And so if we think about that and we relate it to the care of our parents, something happened overnight or over time that brought you into this caregiving role, okay? And something is going to continue to happen because older parents don't get younger. They usually don't get healthier. They're going to need more help. So these events are going to continue happening and happening and happening. And wouldn't you rather have a plan instead of not? So I want to talk now about how to get our elderly parents to consider information, look at options, make decisions. And you may have already tried to talk to your parents who are like, don't worry about it. I got this covered or they're digging in their heels. They're in denial. Maybe you're in denial. Maybe you're watching your parents get sick and older and you don't want to think about it because if you think about it, you're like, oh, then maybe I got to make a plan or I have to talk about it. And if I don't talk about it, maybe it's not going to get worse. And, you know, I'm uncomfortable talking about it and I don't know what to say. Now, let's add family complications in here. Let's say that you are a spouse of a caregiver. And so you could be a son-in-law or a daughter-in-law and your husband or wife is the caregiver. And you're watching this situation and you're thinking, this is crazy. My husband or wife is over there 20, 30 hours a week and I never get to see them. And I'm having to take care of the kids and the dog and it's all falling on me because they're doing all this stuff. And you're watching your spouse get sick and have health issues and not sleep at night and, you know, gain weight and all this kind of stuff. It's just, it's a mess, right? And you try to have a conversation with your spouse who, mm, none of your business, don't tell me what to do with my parents. So you think, well, I'll just zip it up. I'll not say anything, but you continue to watch this, right? And, and they complain to you about how miserable they are. That's when you kind of have to say, I understand what stress you're in. You know, I can't, you know, I'm not in your situation. I'm not doing everything that you're doing, but I see what this is doing to you physically and mentally. I see what it's doing to us, our family, our children, your job. Somehow we have to come to a place where we can talk about all of this. And then depending on your relationship with your in-laws, okay, your father-in-law or your mother-in-law may blame you for wanting to put them in a home or may blame you for talking to your husband or wife, who is their son or daughter, to bring up all this stuff. So, so immediately you become the, the bad person, right? So that is even more uncomfortable. So what do you do about this? Well, easier said than done, I know, but if you can remove the emotions and focus on the facts. So what's the problem here? Do your parents or your in-laws need help? How much help? Why do they need help? Are there health issues? Can they not take care of the house? Do they have memory loss? I mean, what really is going on? So when caregiving starts, there's a lot of little things, minor issues like, you know, you're just picking up groceries or a prescription here and there. Not really a lot, and it's easy to do, and it doesn't affect much. But as time goes on, the average caregiver is doing 20 hours a week in addition to a full-time job to care for a parent. And so at the time that you find yourself or your spouse cooking meals, picking up medications, managing medications, going to doctor appointments, helping with bathing, what does that mean? That means that your parents can't manage independently anymore without your help. And taking the emotions aside, 
and looking at the facts, it's not going to get better. They're not ever going to need less time. They're not ever going to need less care. Their health probably isn't going to get better. And that's a sad realization for everybody. But if you think about it for a minute, ask yourself, are you doing more for your parents than your spouse and your career and your children and your health? And really, how is that balancing out? It's probably not. So here's the important question to ask yourself. You want your parents to make decisions. What role do you, as the caregiver, who is helping them day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out? Where do you come in with all that? What role do you play? Could the problem be you and the amount of assistance and help that you are providing instead of your parents not wanting to make a decision? So when you think about it in the opposite way, is all this help that you're providing allowing your parents not to make decisions. Because in a sense, you've already made the decision. You're providing the care. You're doing everything they need. But at what personal cost to you are you doing this? Now, in some cultures, daughter may feel like she has to do this, give up everything. I get it, okay? But there's a point where you can feel guilty about bringing up your needs to a parent. There's also a point where you can be some, so tired and so exhausted and so worn out that you're really not doing a good job. And you probably don't want to admit it. How do you know this? You're exhausted. You're not sleeping. You're getting sick. You're snapping at people. You're becoming impatient. You're angry. You feel resentful. You're arguing with your spouse. Your kids aren't doing well in school. They're having behavioral problems. This is a problem, okay? And often family caregivers cause parents not to have to make decisions because you help too much. So how do you blow the whistle on this and call a time out, okay? First of all, you have to realize your role in this problem and accept what you've done and the situation that you've created. Then you have to think about how to talk to your parents about it and have solutions in hand. You just don't go to your elderly parent and say, oh, we got to talk about this. I can't, can't, do this. can't do this anymore. I just say, I can't do this anymore. I'm stressed. Ah, no. You have to go to your parents and say, you know, this is a lot more that I can handle. I've got all these other life issues that I need to deal with. And so here's my plan about how to get extra care and ensure that you get the care that you need so that we're all kind of having a little more balance in our life. You have to stop taking responsibility for the fact that your parents' health is bad. You didn't create that. You didn't create their health issues. You didn't create the fact that maybe they didn't save enough money to pay for care. You didn't create that. But today in your own life, you are creating those problems for yourself and your children who might become your caregivers if you don't pay close attention and watch what's happening as you care for your elderly parents or your grandparents or your spouse. So while caregiving may seem easy initially, year one, year two, a lot of caregivers by the time you're at year three, five, 10, believe it or not, 20, and some of you have moved your parents into your house thinking, what on earth did I do? You're a little too far down the road for this conversation. The earlier you can talk about this, the better. So remember our earlier discussion about 
you know, not seeing the problem with parents taking medications or going to the doctor, and then it turns into this disaster. You have this huge opportunity today to prevent that disaster from happening. Okay, so you have to think about how you can back off of helping, look for options, look for solutions. If you don't know how to do that, I'll put a link below this video. You can contact me through my website. I talk to caregivers all over the United States by phone or virtual call. I talk to you about resources and planning and how to have these conversations with your parents. So your parents may refuse to have the discussion because if you've been helping for any period of time, they're not gonna want anything to change. They know you, they trust you, it's easy. They don't, they'll say, oh, I don't want strangers coming into the house. I can do it myself. Well, here's the thing. If they refuse, say, okay, I get it. You think you can do it for yourself. Why don't we try that out for a month and then we can talk about it. And so for 30 days, you don't show up and you don't do a thing. And maybe in that 30 days, your parents will call you and say, you know what? You're right. We can't do it. We need some help. What can we do? What options do you have for us? Now, the scary thing is you're going to be thinking, wow, if I don't help them, something really bad could happen. Yes, it could. But because your parents can't see that far into the future, they don't realize it. So if you stop providing care and you say, look, mom or dad, if at any point in this next week or two weeks or three weeks or month, you realize you need my help, let me know, I'll come over and help. But at that point, we have to have this discussion about aging and decision-making and what we're gonna do about your care, where you're gonna live, who's gonna be your caregiver, how we're gonna pay for it, all of that. So in a sense, you as the family caregiver, you have to be that catalyst to create the change because sometimes you have enabled your parents not to make decisions. Now, admittedly, sometimes they don't know what decisions they have to make and they don't know what their options are. But like we talked about before, the example of me sending my mom information from all these weight loss companies, you can help with that. So you are the, in a sense, facilitator of decision-making and care for your parents who need a lot of help. Thank you for joining me for this month's live stream. Please press the button, share this uh, broadcast, share this video with other people that you know who may be in similar situations, caring for aging parents or watching their spouses or friends care for aging parents. And know that decision-making has to happen and know that changes have to happen, but you're really struggling with how on earth to make that happen. <laughs> I'm Pamela D. Wilson. I am a caregiving and aging expert. I've been doing this for over 20 years. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me on this live stream. I will look forward to seeing you all again next month.